Welcome to the Lifestyle Medicine Update. I'm Dr. James Machino. Have you ever wondered why some people who get infected with the influenza virus develop life-threatening complications and other people infected with the same virus have only mild symptoms? Well, there are many explanations for this, including the differences in nutritional status, comorbidity issues like having diabetes, or having a weakened immune system due to the aging process or the use of certain medications. But some new research published in the Journal of Immunology in May 2022 has shown that eating high cholesterol foods appears to be a major factor in promoting more severe infections, especially in the lungs. As the researchers point out, previous studies on humans have shown a link between high fat diets and elevated blood cholesterol with increased susceptibility to infection and lowered immune response. For example, obesity is a well-known risk factor for severe COVID-19 and influenza infections. We also know that high serum cholesterol levels can lead to higher risk for sepsis in people that develop influenza. Now, the 2022 study has shown us how high cholesterol diets are likely linked to having worse outcomes for people who develop these infections. So the study showed that feeding mice a high cholesterol diet significantly increases the severity of influenza A viral infection compared to mice fed a low cholesterol diet. The high cholesterol foods stimulated the immune cells, especially in the lungs, to overproduce inflammatory cytokines, leading to the notorious cytokine storm that is often the final and life-threatening step that occurs in severe influenza and COVID-19 infections. We know that preventing cytokine storm is an important way to prevent major complications of COVID-19 and influenza infections as well as death. So this animal, this animal model helps to explain what we have observed in human cases of influenza and COVID-19 where high cholesterol blood levels increase the risk of having uh, more serious and life-threatening outcomes. In fact, in the mouse model, even before the introduction of the influenza virus, the high cholesterol diet alone was already producing inflammatory changes in the lungs. It was in some respects preparing the lungs for a more adverse reaction should a virus show up at some point down the road. So the researchers stated the following, and I quote, our data collectively show that dietary cholesterol increased morbidity in influenza infected mice. The response appeared to be a result of an aberrant immune response occurring in the lungs rather than the effect of the virus itself. These results demonstrate the need to consider how host factors can contribute to disease outcome." End of quote. So the word host means your body and your body's internal environment. This means that your body's internal environment largely determines the severity of the symptoms you'll experience if you contract one of these viruses. Eating high cholesterol foods is one of the factors that creates an internal environment that enables certain viruses to produce more severe and serious infections. So I've suggested for a long time that eating high cholesterol foods is very undesirable. Of course, having high blood cholesterol is strongly linked to cardiovascular disease, the number one killer in our society. But high cholesterol foods are dangerous for other reasons. And now we're seeing its detrimental effects on increasing the risk of more severe and life-threatening infections. So for many reasons, I suggest that you avoid eating high cholesterol foods, which include foods such as egg yolks, organ meats like liver and kidney and brains, any milk or yogurt that's higher than 1% milk fat, butter, cheese, ice cream, cream, sour cream, all the high fat dairy products, including ghee, which is sort of a clarified butter. Also red meat, beef and pork, high in cholesterol. Many pastries, of course, contain butter, cream, and egg yolks. And also be careful with too much. You can have some shellfish, but be careful you don't have it too often. So I've included the references for this information in the text below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.